Well, Jay Baba to you all and happy Baba birthday to you also. Welcome to our 2023 Meher Baba's birthday celebration. And we're here to share the Baba quotes that have been sent out to us by Baba Zoom. Baba has given us so many wonderful ways to remember him. And the quotations we're going to hear today will certainly provide us with an example of that. Before we begin, I would like to share something Baba has given out regarding his words. You must understand that whenever Baba gives out words for his lovers to use and read, he attaches a spiritual energy to them, something like an atomic spiritual bomb. Then, when one reads those words, even if he does not understand even one word of what he reads, a part of the spiritual energy will be absorbed by that person. And this energy will be very important for that person in his spiritual progress. And I've taken that from Lord Mayher Online, page 5100, if you want to look. So let's begin to share these quotes and enjoy the spiritual energy in them. Also, if you've colored in the mandala around your quote and feel like it, please show us your artwork. I suggest that we read the quote, give our comments if we want to, read it again so we can absorb it even more, and then pause for comments from anyone else. And those folks will hopefully just feel free to pipe up with their comments. Let's raise hands digitally to read the quote. And to do that, click on the reactions button at the bottom of your screen, then select raise hand. So let's see who we have to begin. Uh-huh. We have Mayher. Mayher, let's hear your quote. Sure. Intense longing for union with the infinite reality as well as infinite patience are indispensable in the process of transcending the mind. If there is lack of intense longing for union with God, the mind lapses into its usual samskaric working. And if there is lack of infinite patience, the very longing that the mind entertains sustains the working of the limited mind. It is only when there is a balance between infinite longing and infinite patience that the aspirant can, can ever hope to pierce through the veil of the limited mind. And this combination of extremes can only come through the grace of a perfect master. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Would you like to comment on that? Mayor? I believe... Um, how I saying about having a lot of patience to uh, get the uh, grace of the perfect master. Mm -hmm. And I believe this uh, quote is kind of uh, uh, directed towards, towards me because I don't have a lot of patience, especially at work. I am called the most impatient guy. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Baba has sent me this quote to remind me that I need to have a lot of patience, at least uh, in the infinite reality. Uh, so that I can, uh, I can, uh, then, then only the grace of the perfect master will, will come. And then uh, uh, the, the patience is indirectly related to longing because most of the time the impatience comes from because uh, we don't wait, there's no longing. So that's what I understand. Lovely. Would anyone else like to say something about that quote? And just jump in and say something, just don't raise hand. Well, I have something to say, which is that I believe, I know I've read that recently, and I believe that's from the series of discourses on meditation and near the end. And it's, um, you know, connected with that somehow. Very interesting. Wow, you've got a lot of words, a lot of energy. Okay, well, let's move on. We now have iPhone. Uh, could you tell us who you are, Miss iPhone? I don't recognize your face.
you with the green scarf. Hi, 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 Diana. I am Lenita. Lenita oh, Lenita, Zubi. hi. It helps when we know your name. <laughs> that, okay. There's no, my name is not there in my picture. No, it says under... iPhone. You're Miss iPhone. Oh, oh I had to phone. change that. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't well, know that. Tell us your name. Tell us mm. your quote. Okay. Jay Baba, everyone. Happy birthday, Baba. So, okay, that's my quote. <laughs> Without adversity, there is no rest. In hardship and sorrow, be grateful and at peace. In distress, always keep content. Have patience and at all times, be at easy. <laughs> it's a hard one, right? It's a beautiful one, I guess. And this is, uh, this is always with me, even before I read this quote, before I got this quote, this is something that I always share with Baba, you know, <laughs> my, my longing for be at peace and easy at all times, no matter what. And it's hard for me, you know, of course, it's very hard. But um, I have hope that uh, my content and easy and patience will grow in time for me. Uh, and I love the first, the first sentence, without adversity, there is no rest that I, I really needed to hear that. And I thank you for this quote. It's very appropriate for me at the time. Now, you know, at this time in my life. And, uh, and it's beautiful and I'm, I'm very grateful that I got that. And Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to read it again? And then I'm gonna ask Meher to read his again because I forgot to ask him to do that. So first you can <laughs> proceed. Okay, okay. Without adversity, there is no rest. In hardship and sorrow, be grateful and at peace. In distress, always keep content. Have patience and at all times be at easy. Wow, the patience theme. Let's hear it from Meher. Thank you, Lenita. Meher? Jay Bob. Oh. Intense longing for union with the infinite reality as well as infinite patience are indispensable in the process of transcending the mind. If there is lack of intense longing for union with God, the mind lapses into its usual samskaric working. And if there is lack of infinite patience, the very longing that the mind entertains sustains the working of the limited mind. It is only when there is a balance between infinite longing and infinite patience that the aspirant can ever hope to pierce through the veil of the limited mind. And this combination of extremes can only come through the grace of a perfect master. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Jai Baba. Thank you. Let's move on to Wendy. Jay Baba, Wendy. Jay Baba, happy birthday. Baba birthday to everyone. Yeah, I think we have a theme going here. Mine is to stick to me means to keep me pleased at the cost of your own comforts and pleasures. It means to remain resigned to my will, whether you keep good health or bad, whether you make money or lose it, and whether you gain name and fame or become the laughing stock of others. I thought it was a good one for me. <laughs> you know what's going on just generally um, in my world? And uh, yeah, it always amazes me how they're bang on um, for what you need, uh, all of them, 
I feel like every one of them is reminding me to stay grounded and trust Baba, no matter what, whether you're feeling good or bad, mentally, physically, or emotionally, just keep holding on tight. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Let's, let's hear it again, Wendy. To stick to me means to keep me pleased at the cost of your own comforts and pleasures. It means to remain resigned to my will, whether you keep good health or bad, whether you make money or lose it, and whether you gain <clears throat> and fame or become the laughing stock of others. Jay Baba. Tough one, yeah, very good. <laughs> Thank you. And now we have Susan. Okay, I can just speak, right? Yes. This is, yeah, this is my first time. I'm notoriously low tech. So I get very excited when it all works. You're doing um, fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, we definitely have a theme here and um, uh, perfectly appropriate. And mine is don't feel dejected or despondent with difficulties and inconveniences. Face it all. That's heroism. There is no credit in doing things easily. One must get resistance, difficulties, and pass through awkward situations. These are the real tests that bring out the best and the worst. The more opposition from Maya, the more you should resist and face it with fierce determination. Therein lies the fun of the game, to face and encounter opposition. If not, life becomes dull and monotonous. No risk of that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, and, and thank, thank God for God and thank God for having faith because I don't, I don't know how we would all manage without it, frankly. Yeah, and 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 he knows it's all going on. <laughs> uh, yes, right. Should we hear it again? Sure. Don't feel dejected or despondent with difficulties and inconveniences. Face it all. That's heroism. There is no credit in doing things easily. One must get resistance difficulties and pass through awkward situations. There, these are the real tests that bring out the best and the worst. The more opposition from Maya, the more you should resist and face it with fierce determination. Therein lies the fun of the game to face and encounter opposition. If not, life becomes dull and monotonous. No worries on that score. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jay Baba. And now we have Mike. Maya? Yes. We're, okay. I'm going to let Helen read this. She has a better reading voice than me, and we have some comments. <laughs> Jay Baba, everyone. I alone am real, and my will governs the cosmic illusion is the truth when I say that the waves do not roll or the leaves do not move without my will. Be resigned completely to my will and my will be yours. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. So it's definitely in the same theme. <laughs> so we're yeah. all trying to surrender ourselves to uh, Baba's will. Yeah. That, and that theme seems to, it reminded me of something Baba said, I believe it was in the discourses and the, I'm, I'm probably paraphrasing, you can correct me, but Baba said, for art to exist, it had to suffer. And our, I think our lives as, as um, spiritual aspirant it puts us in the category <laughs> of artists uh, with the art of living. He, he <laughs> used that phrase too, the art of living. So uh, we can think of ourselves all as artists in uh, Baba's love. Beautiful. Let's hear it again. I alone am real, 
and my will governs the cosmic illusion. It is the truth when I say that the waves do not roll or the leaves do not move without my will. Be resigned completely to my will and my will be yours. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Mm -hmm. Now we have Ray. Let's hear your quote, Ray. Hi, Jay Baba. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. The mind is pleased when a good thing is given to it, but it soon returns to its original state. The same mind revolts when some bitter medicine like castor oil is forced upon it, but again, after a short while, it reverts to its normal state. This proves that both the pleasures and pains of this world are short-lived. Hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I, I, <laughs> I've been feeling uh, um, lately uh, more like a, uh, uh, like a bulldozer force behind me slowly pushing. Uh, and um, my, my fears and my, my anxieties um, are like, um, slowly being evaporated by it, uh, no matter what I'm doing. And it's given me to, to appreciate the, the fact that all is well and he is doing it all, uh, pushing forward uh, um, in all the ways that I really ask for, uh, no matter what my daily uh, triumphs and trials and tribulations are some, 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 something like that. Jay Baba. Jay Baba, let's hear it again. The mind is pleased when a good thing is given to it, but it soon returns to its original state. The same mind revolts when some bit of medicine like castor oil is forced upon it, but again, after a short while, it reverts to its normal state. This proves that both the pleasures and pains of this world are short-lived. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you. Jay can, I, can I comment on? on Certainly, <laughs> anybody. I'm, and anybody can comment anytime. Thank you for piping up, Ron. Yeah, that sounds like uh, what. In the last few decades, there's been a, a, a school of. Uh, science uh, exploring happiness, positive, uh, what do they call it? Positive, I forgot now what they call it, but it's about happiness. And um, that's, what, that's one of the conclusions they come to is that we always go back to a set point. Now the set point can move up or down, but that takes a while. But in the meantime, something that we like happens to us and, and we feel happy, but then we just, we will go back to that set point and, and, and vice versa. And then what Mike talked about, I wanted to comment on that too, about the art, art form of, um, uh, of the spiritual life, being an artist and, because there's, I think in, in leading a spiritual life, there's creativity and performance that are involved. And um, I had this one uh, uh, statement. It, it doesn't say who, who wrote it or anything, but it was called The Art of Happiness. And I think Bob, Baba would have liked that. I remember sh sharing that with Don Stevens once, and he, he gave me some positive, you know, that he really enjoyed reading that. But The Art of Leading a Happy Life, it's, it takes some uh, exploration and experimentation and uh examination so i think uh baba can keep us busy that way by wanting us to be happy jay baba thanks ron i have been um i have been remiss i haven't stopped and asked people um if they wanted to comment on other people's quotations so maybe we could take a little pause now and anybody who's had a thought about either another um quotation that's been read. I'm sorry, it's passed. We might review it for you if you'd like to hear it again. Or 
we're getting some theme developed here maybe. And if, does anyone want to come? Well, we have one comment in the chat. I don't know if you've looked, but um, Seppi has written, there's definitely a theme. This one really speaks to me too. So I'm starting to hear about difficulty, um, keeping at it, forbearance. Um, it's coming through us like Ray's, like Ray's quotation, like it's just moving through us. We're, we're getting pushed along by this. And uh, we need patience because that may not be our chosen outcome, but there we are. Uh, kind of for me, a serious theme. Does anyone want to pipe up? Raise your hand, say something. Yes, go ahead, Mike. I, th I think a lot of bravery is also needed, especially nowadays. Um, it's, it seems to be that uh, now they, now more than ever, we are faced with a lot of falseness and it's becoming, actually it's becoming easy because it's becoming so false that uh, it's getting somewhat more easy to, to judge between uh, honesty and, and uh, falseness. So it, I, for me, it helps to think of think of it that way. That you know, it's it, it's easy to make a, a decision, easier to make a decision now. That you know very well that's not that's not right, and uh, uh, to uh, you know to do what thinking what the model you have said do what you think would please Baba. Uh, it's um, it's getting easier to think in those terms. Um, so, so I guess there's maybe a good side to the uh, to the uh, tail end of the Kali Yuga, if it is. So, so <laughs> it's easier to decide if if you're in that frame of mind. Jay Bama, thank you. Anyone else? Just wave your hand or pipe up. Yeah, I'd like to share something. <clears throat> it's a quote from Baba. It's not the quote I received, but. It certainly speaks for me. Um, terrible suffering is the sign of happiness and peace to come. Great heat denotes the coming of rain. Great suffering and intense sorrow indicates that happiness is about to dawn. Anything beyond your capacity will necessarily change your capacity because, because so long as everything is within your limits, you don't know what is beyond them. And everything concerning God and God realization is beyond limits. So in this way, great suffering and being plagued with terrible problems are beneficial. Jay Baba. Jay Baba, that's right in line with everything else we've been hearing. Thank you very much, Ruthie. You're welcome, Jay Baba. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, somebody once told me you can't be brave without being vulnerable first. And <clears throat> that seemed to be, even though it wasn't a Baba quote, it seemed it's short and sweet. So sometimes I can say to myself, okay, Wendy, you have to be vulnerable here to be brave. And uh, yeah, it's like a little bit of medicine. Anyway, Jay Baba. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. I feel like um, I can really relate to what Ruthie was talking about. Of course, um, the last few months have been a harrowing journey and um, a lot of bravery, but the suffering, I can say, was well worth the love and the grace, his grace, to pull us clo pull me closer to him. Um, that's, a, I mean... Yeah, great joy. It's it's what Vesta was talking about, the balance between the um, oh, what is anguish, uh, ecstasy, agony, and ecstasy, and in the middle is the mercy, and um, that's where the grace comes in. It's really true, <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba, thank you, Michelle. And I'd like to carry on with the quotations, and then please, you know. We'll have another pause if we don't have comments after each one. Now we have Paula. 
She bought the pollen. Okay. Um. Hmm. Happy birthday, Baba. I don't. I don't really understand this. <laughs> Do your duty faithfully and conscientiously, and put it above everything else. Then you will please me. Neither praise nor blame should distract you from the path of your duty. Leave aside all other considerations but your appointed duty. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Repeat, please. <laughs> would, would you like to is would you like to comment or is, is that the end of it? No, no, I'll read it again because um do your duty faithfully and conscientiously and put it above everything else. Then you will please me. Neither praise nor blame should distract you from the path of your duty. Leave aside all other considerations but your appointed duty. Well, the trick is, what is my appointed duty? <laughs> huh? I'd, I'd like to... Yeah. Yeah. Help. <laughs> well, I think it's what we see right in front of us. What do we need to do today? I mean, for me, because I've, I've thought about that. What do I feel needs to be done? I, I also wonder if it's connected to your sense of purpose. That's a good one. That's a really good one because, you know, at this point, um, I don't know what my sense, you know, I don't know what that is. I don't have a track. I'm not on a railroad track. It's like mm -hmm. um, there's everything keeps moving. So when everything keeps moving, it's like, okay, um, it's like being a fish out of water and just floundering around. And you just do the best you can. But anyway, it's kind of interesting, you know, and, and I'll have to ponder it. It's like, am I not doing my duty, Baba? Um, that, I mean, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Or do I, you know, just need to pay attention? Maybe like what you're saying to what's in front of me mm -hmm. and what's my duty to what's in front of me right now. It um, might also have something to do with the with your duty in relation to Mayor Baba. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, what do you want? And that's what I ask him pretty much every day. What do you want? Because I don't know what you want. I'm trying to hear. <laughs> well, it, it, it may also be. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say it may also be connected to um, our sense of ourselves. That Baba really invites us to know ourselves and to know ourselves well. Um, at, it, from a place of wholeness and acceptance. Um, and, you know, and from there, we connect more with our own divinity. And so that may be part of the invitation to you um, to, to, you know, to pay attention to your connection to yourself as well. I, th I think there might be a practical side to this, too. I look around and I see that we're all of that age group where uh, we don't have jobs anymore. I mean, we're, we're retired or, or when we have a a lot of excess time and when we had jobs you know with somebody telling us you got to go to work you got to go on the time clock well in in a way that was that made it easier you know you you had something to do you you had a purpose it was somebody else's uh thing but but now we find well i'm sure <laughs> i know i do and i'm sure a lot of us do we don't have that we are left to our own devices now and um it is up to us to um, be creative. It, I think it's a wonderful time for be creative, but we've been in that mode of um, um, following following a certain thing that we had to do. We had to get up in the morning. We got to do this and and that. And and now it is up to us to uh, find our find our own um, our own lives, our, our own purpose. So it's it's it can be daunting. It can be uh, frightening. That's where the bravery comes in again. <laughs> Thank you. Wendy, you wanted to say something? Um, yes. Paula, I saw you do that with Vesta. You 
you knew what to do and how to do it, I thought with such grace. That's, I'm just saying I observed that in you. Um, so for what that's worth, um, I think you got it, girl. Um, Jay Baba. <laughs> Thank you. That's been everything everybody's saying is really helpful, actually. And it is, you know, without, I'm, I'm not good at creating structure for myself and I'm good at um, avoiding, uh, you know, creating blocks for myself. I know that. And it's, it's something that's so big that Baba has to help me with that, you know? But that was an opportunity that was Baba's grace to be able to get that close to Vesta. And I learned so much and I love her so much. <laughs> I just love her so much, you know, and um, the, I think the celebration next weekend is going to be magnificent for her. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, that went, now that was clear, you know, it was like, okay, it felt like Baba gave me something to do and I appreciated it so much, but when it feels, when it's not clear, it's like, oh, I mean, I have my family to pay attention to. Um, things like that that are coming up but um, it's and I've and I'm trying to keep I'm trying you know there's a line there too between responsibility and Baba and and my responsibility and Baba's responsibility and there's a boundary there where it's like okay Baba do I just do I do this do I go after part of it right now is my physical health do I do how how close of attention do I pay to these different things? Um, and do I go after really trying to get help or do I leave it to you? You know, those kinds of things. It's like, um, what's, my, what's my part and what's your part? And sometimes I can't tell. And that happened with my son when I was in India. He was 11 and Baba told me very clearly in my head, really clearly, he said, He's not yours. He's mine. And you don't cross that boundary. He belongs to me. So, and I just said, Baba, I just don't always know where that boundary is. Then I made the mistake of telling my son. So I got it thrown back in my face a lot. <laughs> boundary, mom. <laughs> so anyway, that, that kind of enters into it too. Is it's like, Baba, what's my part, you know, to do and what's overstepping and just you know, he says, do your best and then leave the results to me. So there's an answer in that. But anyway, you know, um, what I can say is I have this thing about confusion and I've told you this before, but when I was in India, Balnatu, I, the first thing I said to Bao when I met him, Balnatu, he said, how are you? And I said, I'm really confused, Bao. I had just gotten there and I was very confused. And he said, well, um, what confusion of mind with confusion of was with, with clarity of mind god works with us with confusion of mind god works within us so there's that <laughs> so that's what i try to remember anyway conundrums <clears throat> but thank you very much everybody for your input because it's really helpful you know I'm just another thing I'm finding after my son's death I'm it's taken two and a half years and I'm finally kind of back in my body I realized that it was such a shock it's like um it's it's taken I, I don't take blood pressure medication anymore but it took two and a half years for to to get to not even know what happened to me so so there's there's that. Anyway, um, that's off, probably off the railroad track. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. Thank you, Paula. And I'd like to come, I have two things that maybe we, I'd like to finish this particular conversation with. And that is that as far as Vesta goes, I think that was real clear because Vesta invited you into her life, as you've told before. And second, what you did for her is something you're good at. And I think in general, I could generalize that and say, if we look at our lives and say, where are the invitations and what am I good at? 
we might find where our duty is because Baba works with our with what we have. Um, and uh, I this conversation's been really, you know, the sharing has been really important for me, what I've heard from all of you. So thank you very much, Baba. Well, thank you. That helps a lot. Yeah. That the invitation part that really helps. That's true. And that's Baba's invitation. Yeah, thank you. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Mama. And now, and that was- could I, could I just add one quick thing? Yes. Um, I just think about what Mara said that um, it doesn't really matter what you do. It's the time you spend with your beloved that matters. So it doesn't matter if I'm vacuuming or painting. It depends on, you know, is he with me? It it was as if I think about the poetry the other night and how beautifully Bob Yeager talked about how he walked out and thought about Baba and he was going, you know, he was going to be with Baba this whole walk. And the next thing he knew, he was in the supermarket between the Mexican and, and Chinese food and Baba came back to do, into his mind. So that's my life, you know. <laughs> I'm between the Mexican and the Chinese. I'm trying to food. I'm trying to keep him close, keep him close. But, you know, Maya has its way. So anyway, I just think about what Mara said. As long as I am trying to keep him as my companion, uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> what I'm doing. So anyway, that's all. Sorry. Thank you, Ruthie. Let's move on now to Marvin and Michelle, both of them. Hey, Baba. Um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about what Paula's quote and what Paula's saying. And I feel like we have all these balls up in the air and sometimes they fall and we have to gather them and decide which ones we need to pick up and which ones we need to lay aside. And I feel like in my life, that's right now what I'm looking at. Um, my quote's kind of interesting. <laughs> Let's see. Try to respond honestly to the dictates of your conscience. Spiritual evolution consists in guiding life in the light of the highest values perceived through intuition and not allowing it to be determined, determined by the past. Factual knowledge has to be subordinated to intuitive perceptions and the heart has to be allowed full freedom in determining the ends of life without any interference from the mind. So follow your heart and don't let your, your that little um, tape recorder in your brain, the, your mind that goes rat a tat tat and goes, oh, it was like this, it was like this, that kind of thing. And really follow, just follow your heart and listen to Baba in within. So that's my thought on that. Would you like to read it again? Sure. Try to respond honestly to the dictates of your conscience. Spiritual evolution consists in guiding life in the light of the highest values perceived through intuition and not allowing it to be determined by the past. Factual knowledge has to be subordinated to intuitive perceptions, and the heart has to be allowed full freedom in determining the ends of life without any interference from the mind. Thank you. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. I have a comment. I'm not sure if it fits in with this quote or the previous quote. But I was thinking how Baba is, says he's here to help us and to bestow his grace upon us, which actually, in my experience, transforms our, our way of thinking and the way uh, we feel about things. So one of the things that I feel he does is he, he takes what might be a, a conventional paradigm about responsibilities, which might be that responsibilities are burdensome. That might be what the culture suggests, that our responsibilities are burdens. But if we know that Bob, 
one of the most important things to please Baba is to carry out our responsibilities and not to shirk our responsibilities. If we know that that would please God, then it becomes, he transforms it into a joy to, to just have a responsibility to carry out because we know that he'll be happier if we do it. And that makes it become something that's not burdensome at all, but uh, a, a beautiful bestowal of, a, a, it's a gift. Thank you, Ron. It, it reminds me of how the, you know, people would treasure their orders from Baba because that was the connection. You know, yeah, can I say one little thing? When I was in India, I need to do this more, but when I was in India, this is 1986, I said, I asked Baba to change my mind. I said, Baba, please change my mind, like the structure of my mind and the way I thought. And you know what? He did. Mm. There you go. People noticed it too. He did. He, he changed just the, the structure of my thinking and my outlook on life. So. Wow. Well, Marvin. Okay. <clears throat> well, this is a very unusual quote. It, it, anyhow, true control is not merely negative. When some positive values come within the focus of consciousness, their claims for being expressed in life generate mental responses that ultimately removed all tendencies obstructing a free and full expression of those values. Thus, the tendencies for lust, greed, and anger are removed through an appreciative recognition of the value of a life of purity, generosity, and kindness. J. Bob. I, Did you repeat I, that, Marvin? What? Did you repeat it? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to read it three, about five times, and I'm still <laughs> at, at a loss. Um, true control is not merely negative. When some positive values come within the focus of consciousness, their claims for being expressed in life generate mental responses that ultimately remove all tendencies obstructing a free and full expression of those values. Thus the tendencies for lust, greed, and anger are removed through an appreciative recognition of the value of a life of purity, generosity, and kindness. Wow. <clears throat> um, Thank you. I had a very strange dream last night. <laughs> I was on the beach, uh, and uh, you, some of you may know that I'm a goldsmith, and I was asked, I was commissioned to build a throne for Baba on the beach. And I kept searching for gold and gemstones in the sand. And Baba and I had an argument, and he won. And I built it out of sandstone and wood. I don't know what this has to do with the quote, <laughs> but it's very interesting, sort of. Thank you for sharing that. What a dream. Yeah. It's a dream to dream of Baba. <laughs> so Marvin, did you and your intention was to build it of gold and Baba's desire was gold and gemstones, yes. <laughs> was uh, and wood he, and 
And he said, no, no, I want it <laughs> out of simple materials. Wow. And we, you know, and, and I, I, I kept digging and digging while he's talking to me and telling me, no, I don't want gold. I don't want gemstones. I want it simple. So I just took the sand and compressed it into sandstone and then took wood to help, you know, shape it for his comfort. I can see the trans transition between greed and want <clears throat> and the world and Maya and yeah. into purity and simplicity. Is it not there? Yeah. There is, there is definitely a relationship. And the gold's in you, Marvin. You're the goldsmith. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. I can also appreciate the um, one connection that, that I felt from your dream and your quote is about the process of purification. And th that, that we uh, invite ourselves and with Baba's grace to go through and, and experience. And... You know, and I know that I myself often have sort of a negative connotation about control, but um, but this had a very positive spin. It was kind of it was more about um, a, a kind of uh, divine discipline, if you will, that human beings tend to translate as control. But then the divine discipline is being part of the process of purification, which then helps kind of clear us from lust and greed and you know some of the other things. Um, so I, I actually thought that was all quite fabulous. Thank you. Jay Baba. <clears throat> Any other comments? So glad you shared your dream, Marvin. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. We now have Patty, Jay Baba Patty. Jay Baba, everyone, and um, happy birthday. I, I'm finding all the comments um, pretty amazing. And uh, definitely a theme, of course, running through the whole group. Um, and speaking to the control, the impermanence, it seems like the sand and the uh, wood and the beach is all just illusion anyway. And the impermanence of that being able to be washed away is part of the illusion that we live in. And, and I also agree with um, Susan that the capacity to um, follow a wish of a master and to have that be um, what we can do is um, the capacity to use a little control and to eliminate our desires along the way. My quote, I had not heard, uh, is enthusiasm should be harnessed by the wisdom that knows how to wait for the fruit of action with patience. And I'll read it again. Enthusiasm should be harnessed by the wisdom that knows how to wait for the fruit of action with patience. Mm -hmm. And you know how I feel about that with what oh. I've been listening to this morning and with me in my own life is I agree the screen here is of, of age of um, rather long time Baba lovers and um, probably with a lot of similar histories. And what we have learned over these years and with the Mondali and our um, spiritual aspirations and disciplines is that Patience is the name of the game and um, the seeds that were planted along the way in our life through our loving and choosing, being chosen by Baba clearly, is now we're at the age of that fruition. And I really believe that even though it looks harder and looks crazier, it, it's just, I think we're just being shown the impermanence of everything other than the one. So um, that's how I feel about it. <laughs> Happy birthday, everybody. Good to see you all. Jay Baba. Thank you, Jay Baba Penny. Does anyone want to comment on that? 
I have I have a comment with regard to that impermanence. I was going to say this anyhow, but that set it up uh, so that it fits better. But what I was reading a book maybe about ten years ago, fifteen years ago, something like that, uh, by a, a mind body uh, doctor, and in it was expressed this idea that I just keep trying to remember it over and over again throughout life because of the truth of it, which is somehow <clears throat> quite difficult to grasp. That's why it has to be remembered all the time, which is that our minds habitually, and this, this is not everybody, but most people, I think, think of when something occurs, a, 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 a circumstance arises or a feeling comes your way or uh, you, you meet a person uh, and have a, a sense of them or whatever, any of those things, our minds tend to jump to the fact that it's permanent. So the circumstance means it's always going to, it's always going to be like that. This is what our mind will tend to, to, to say. Also that it is pervasive. So if somebody says something that you don't like, that means everything they'll ever say is going to be something you don't like, you know, it's just kind of reach out for that. And, and that it's personal. Uh, this is the way our mind tends to work unless we can remember that all of that is wrong. That's totally false. What's actually true is everything is temporary. It will only last so long. Everything, that we're going to confront will be temporary. It will also not be pervasive. It will be specific. So look at it and find the specific thing that might be bothering you or make you happy or whatever it might be. And then finally, instead of taking it personally, realize that it's just a situation. It's situational. And I love trying to remember that because it brings me back to uh, being centered and, and not being attached to some crazy notion that's really false or delusional. So. You're saying, Thank you. Yeah. There's a yoga teacher, I can't remember, I think her name is Sean something, and she has a saying that I, I really liked, um, is ignore the story, look to the soul. I think that's what she's talking about. So you don't get attached to forever. That's the same thing. Yeah. Helps with his clarity, but anyway. Thank you for sharing that, Ron. Thank you. Thank Can you. I make a comment on that? Sure. This kind of goes back to Marvin. See, when people tell me stories, it's like I watch, I'm watching a movie in my head. And the movie that I saw was broken down furniture. <clears throat> it's, it's like we're, we're Baba's broken down furniture and he, he, that's much more precious to him than gold and jewels. That's what he wants. He wants his broken down furniture because I saw the impermanence of it. I didn't see a whole throne with wood and sand. I saw the broken down wood. <laughs> so, and that's what's precious to Baba. That's just what I saw in my head. It's an interesting head. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. So um, let's move on to Betty, J. Baba Betty. Hey, Baba. <laughs> Some of us just hopped in on late after the Washington DC meeting, which was really a nice gathering. It's, it's a day for party hopping. <laughs> um, my uh, quote is, life in any community always means control, control of self-interests, self-expression, and of one's own feelings. It is just this control which leads you to self-mastery and realization of truth. At times, it requires a Herculean effort. Um, shall I read it again? Uh, I, I will. One more time. Life in any community always means control. Control of self-interests, 
self-expression, and of one's own feelings. It is just this control which leads you to self-mastery and a realization of truth. At times, it requires a Herculean effort. It's interesting that this, the theme seems to be control <laughs> or, or maybe self-discipline today. Uh, today. Um, I, uh, well, uh, um, my husband Dave passed and not, not even a week ago. So, and I was thinking we had about, a, we had a month together in hospice, which was so sweet and so simple. And I, most of the time I knew what to do. It was just, uh, it was just the sweetest, sweetest time, um, which I'm so grateful for. But now <laughs> the hard part of this is that I'm, I'm kind of in a quandary about how to, how to market, how, how to, should we do a service? Really all I want to do is sit in my living room and talk to people, but I'm, I'm getting a feeling that uh, it's, it's bigger than that. And, and so that there were people who knew him or they're starting to ask, so will there be a service? And I'm realizing that um, in my case, that maybe uh, my control is, it's, it's overcoming fear and kind of shyness is what it is. And maybe, maybe that is the appropriate thing to make a bigger party <laughs> than what I'm comfortable with. I'm, I'm still deliberating, but, but uh, so it's not control in that, you know, harsh kind of discipline sense, but just uh, uh, seeking, seeking what, what Baba wants, seeking what life, life is asking for it and rising. I, and, you know, Baba Zoom for me has been that from day one, <laughs> overcoming fear and shyness. And uh, so I'm familiar with that, that, uh, what is it, that routine of, oh, yes, this is fear again. <laughs> uh, um, so I thank Baba Zoom for that. So anyway, that's what comes to my mind with, with this, my message. Thanks, Dave Baba. Hey, Baba Betty. Uh, Betty, may I ask, what was your husband's name? Dave, Dave Lohman. He was the tractor driver at Marana. That was his, his uh, claim to fame. <laughs> People, Baba called him tractor daddy. I'm in tractor daddy. <laughs> Bao called him that. Did I say Bao called him that? Yeah. <clears throat> it's also very good to ask for help if you decide that you really want to open this up to share with people uh, because it's feeling like people have a need of their own and you could offer that in service. But you don't have to take it all on yourself. Thank you. Yeah. You, pro you probably have people in your life who are very good at these things and who would be delighted to be in wow. service to you, especially right now. Thank you. That's very helpful, Susan. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Betty, I think um, everybody's kind of giving if you don't give yourself permission, everybody else is giving you permission to just take a break. <laughs> well, you know, if I jump right back in. <laughs> now, for me, yeah. that's a break. Being with Baba is a break. Uh, it's yeah. <laughs> whatever <laughs> feeds your soul. It's whatever yeah. feeds your soul. Whatever you find that feeds your soul, that's what you do. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Thank and you. you can take your time. Yeah. yeah, that's beautifully said, um, Paul. And, you know, sometimes I think at times like this, it, we don't want to sit back. We want to be involved. We, we need to find, we need, because there's this energy, there's a lot of energy at a time like this and to, and to see it and to use it in a way that you feel is pleasing to Bob and satisfying to you, Betty. Yeah. Thanks, Diana. That you think would please Dave also something that he would like for you to be doing. Yeah, for sure. 
Jay Baba. Jay Baba. <clears throat> Let's move on to Telly. Jay Baba Telly. Hi, Jay Baba. My quote is Illusion is the basis of the juggler's tricks. Through Maya, the world, which is no more substantial than a mirage, appears to be real. Children admire the juggler and think that his tricks are realities, but adults know he's a trickster and that his tricks are illusions. Ignorant men regard the world as the ultimate reality, but sages know that it is only illusion. if you want that again or not. <laughs> sure, we want to hear it again. Would you like to say something about it first or would you like to read first? Uh, yeah, trickster energy is interesting. Um, I, I think of animals like the coyote or the fox, some of the Native American symbols for the trickster. Uh, I enjoy seeing how it shows up when I'm, I may be falling into trickster energy myself and deluding myself about something uh, or, or taking the illusion for re reality. I think yesterday I struggled, struggled with that when a cousin, a cousin of mine let me know that she was now positive with COVID. She had tested positive and I was just with her with her for a number of days and I realized, well, I got to change my life right now. <laughs> and, and then I fumbled around to take a COVID test and um, that wasn't working. Then eventually it did, but I had to cancel stuff I was going to do. It was just one of those trickster energy days. So I, I think we're all dealing with seeing through the veil of illusion. I'll read it again. Illusion is the basis of the juggler's tricks. Through Maya, the world, which is no more substantial than a mirage, appears to be real. Children admire the juggler and think his tricks are realities. But adults know that he is a trickster and his tricks are illusions. Ignorant men regard the world as the ultimate reality, but sages know that it is only illusion. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Mm -hmm. And we hope for excellent test results for you, Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I came out negative when I finally got the test right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Take it here. Thank you. Well, we have Elizabeth now, Jay Baba Elizabeth. Jay Baba, I've been doing all these things you guys have been talking about, highly distracted. <laughs> I went to the Washington gathering to hear a little bit of Gabriella, but at the same time, Amazon issue came in and they had charged me and I hadn't expected it. Oh, just, you know, stuff. And then I came in while you were talking Marvin's dream, which was amazing. And uh, Ruthie talking about the grocery, no, who, somebody talking about the grocery shelves. Anyway, I've been in one of those. I'm trying to get to another Baba meeting, but I really wanted to be here. So I'm going to read my quote. And then uh, I also want to um, give my condolences to Betty. I had no idea Dave had passed away because I was at the center for, t for 11 days and got back Monday night. So I didn't know. This was my quote. This is my quote. Love answers all questions, for it ignores questioning itself. The more you love me, the less you question. So I'll read that one more time. Love answers all questions, for it ignores questioning itself. The more you love me, the less you question. So me being the ultimate questioner my whole life, 
that's kind of like what I do best. One of the things I do best <laughs> was highly appropriate. And, um, it, you know, I have to think about it. I mean, I've always thought it was a very positive thing to question, to find out information, to study all sides of something and um, be very open-minded and uh, have a wide view and try not to make judgments if I can. Um, and I know Baba lovers who don't do that. I mean, they're, they're so accepting, their faith is so strong. It's really, it's more than faith, it's conviction. And um, uh, I think it's really hard for me to trust. Uh, so, it, so I do always, I've always had a lot of questions. And um, yeah, I'm sure it's from past circumstance and all that, but I wanted to share something with, um, with all of you, especially with Betty. I had a most interesting experience at the Baba Center. Uh, I was trying to figure out why was I there? I didn't have anything scintillating happen or visions of Baba or anything like that. And I, and, you know, one night I was just in my cabin, Cove 2, which is all by myself, which was what I wanted because I'm high risk for COVID. And I didn't want, but at the same time, it's pretty lonely, except Daryl and Susan were next to me, which was great. And I said to myself, to Baba, there was Baba at the back of me and Baba at the front of me, pictures of him. So I was literally surrounded. And I said, um, why am I here? What am I doing here? You know, what, what revelation am I supposed to have? What guidance? And coming back, I think it really was the connections. I met about 10 people I've met on Zoom. I saw lots of old friends. And one of the connections that was new was this woman from Taiwan whose husband had just died within like a week and she had come to the center to scatter his ashes. It was the most unusual thing. They had a long distance relationship for 23 years. And just in the past year, they had gotten married and then he got diagnosed with a rare disease in October or November. And she came for the last several months to be with him in the hospital to take care of him. And uh, she had just uh, made a decision that they would go to Taiwan for traditional Chinese medicine. And within a few days, he took a turn for the worse and passed away within a week. So she was there at the center just to scatter his ashes. She wasn't there long. And I think I'm one of the last persons that she saw before she left uh, Friday night or Thursday night. I don't, I can't remember. But um, you know, they're unique. She had, they had a unique way of handling uh, whatever he's doing. I don't know whether they're doing a memorial or not, but her way of, of his passing was to bring the ashes there. And what she said is she wanted him to always be near Baba. So she scattered them someplace around the ocean near the center. Anyway, Jay Baba, thank you much. Jay Baba, thank you, Elizabeth. Lovely. Okay, we have Ruthie now. Jay Baba, I haven't really read this, so it, bear with me. Restoration of unity does not imply the stamping out of all differences. In the world of forms, there will always be room for a rich diversity of expression. But when you understand the limitless truth, this diversity will not create the least note of discord in the symphony of creation. Being taken up rather in that creative harmony, which reflects ageless and infinite spirit. Out of this understanding, there will emerge spontaneously an attitude of tolerance, which is different from apathy of active appreciation, which is different from passive receptivity, and of life, which is different from the entanglement of attachment. Well, I tell you, Bob always zings you at the end. I'll read it again. Restoration of unity does not imply the stamping out of all differences. 
In the world of forms, there will always be room for a rich diversity of expression. But when you understand the limitless truth, this diversity will not create the least note of discord in the symphony of creation. Being taken up rather in that creative harmony, which reflects ageless and infinite spirit. Out of this understanding, there will emerge spontaneously an attitude of tolerance, which is different from apathy, of active appreciation, which is different from passive receptivity, and of life, which is different from the entanglement of attachments. Hmm. Wow. Well, yeah, this speaks to me about just my everyday life, I guess, and the, and the idea of, uh, you know, I don't understand limitless truth. Um, I know, all I know for me is that Baba is truth, is that limitless truth. So I guess understanding that an attitude of tolerance, which is different from apathy, so, you know, I think that's true in my everyday life. Sometimes my husband might do or say something and I uh, exhibit an attitude of tolerance. But is it really tolerance or, or am I being apathetic? And then the act of appreciation, <laughs> which is different from passive receptivity. So again, I think it speaks to the life that love gives us and our usage of that enthusiastic love that Baba brings to us. So it's looking for that. That's where the true spirit for me seems to reside is moving deeper into the understanding of um, that liveliness that Baba looked for in us. So that's what I got. I like that. I'd like to say I really like that. Um, those two words, creative harmony. You know, we harmonize, but we have to we have to put something into it. Oh, can I say something about that? Yeah. That's been my experience of you, Ruthie, and Betty too. I've noticed the quotes that you two have, and you you are always hosts. And the way you host all our meetings and stuff is just so lovely. And same with Betty. So that's what you read is my experience of you. So oh, sweet. Thank you, Paula. Don't make me cry. It's true. I, I also want to say that that is exactly what is needed on a global scale. I had this image of, you know, sort of dropping that quote, like, all over the planet, right? And people just, oh, where did that come from kind of thing? Because it is exactly what is needed. And um, anyway, it just, it, it made my heart happy to hear it. Thank you. <laughs> and I think we went circled round back to what Mike was saying about the artist. And I think the creative, um, forgive me. Harmony, creative harmony. Creative harmony. And how just what he said, J Bama. <laughs> it was it just took me back. Anything, any other comments? I have a, a short anecdote uh, that I wanted to share, and I was hoping it would fit in with the with the quote that preceded it. Uh, I think it does. I think I found something in there that does, but I'll just preface it with this quote, I can't remember, the, I think Max Lucado, I think. This is a, a takeoff on a quote that he said, which was, God loves you just where, just the way you are. He just doesn't want you to stay there. <laughs> so uh, this sets up this little anecdote, which is years ago, uh, I was on the board of directors for the uh, Baba Center in the Bay Area. And I came up with the idea, an idea, which I, I'm really good at coming up with ideas. And uh, after that, it's up in the air. But uh, 
So the idea was to invite uh, Bob and Jane Brown to come and do a concert in the Bay Area. Now, nobody had ever suggested anything like this. This is this goes back to the uh, the early must have been early 90s because I know my kids were little. And uh, so I, I brought this up and there was like because it was so different uh, from what we had ever done, you know, buying airline tickets and all this kind of thing. Uh, but they said, all right, you know, they, they finally said, OK, well, we can let's do it. But you have to be in charge of it, Ron. And uh, so so I thought, well, I, I guess I have to be in charge of it. Now, the thing is, my vision of uh, of a Baba meeting was pretty simplistic. Basically, set up some chairs and uh, let's remember Baba in some way. Well, so I had this in mind, uh, which was very little in mind when I took on this this idea. But of course, what happened was somebody came up to me and said, Ron, do you have somebody that's going to do refreshments? And I thought, oh, refreshments. Uh, why, why do you have, I could, I said, would you like to do that? No, yeah, that would be great. I, I'll take care of that. Oh, good, good, good. And then somebody else came up to me and said, and then this was over a period of a week or two. Uh, somebody else came up to me and asked me uh, what I had in mind for uh, lighting because of the hall that we were in. They thought maybe some special kind of lighting would enhance the whole performance. And I said, no, I don't. Do you have any ideas on that? Said, yeah, I, I can take care of that. And then somebody else came up about uh, suggesting flowers. You know, who, what was I going to do about that? Well, I hadn't really thought of that. You have some good ideas? Yeah, I'll take care of that. So basically, my pathetic uh, vision of this of this meeting uh, didn't come come off. Uh, rather, it was this a meeting that uh, was really much more pleasant and uh, and and very nice. Especially for this special occasion where we were uh, bringing in uh, these, these singers, so after after that, it was like I I was thanking Baba for saving me because if I would have been if, if those people hadn't come up to me and done that, I would have gotten raked over the coals. I think at least that's that's what I think that would have happened. Uh, it would have been it would have been something that I would have rude that day. So I thanked Baba and he said, oh, no problem. However, don't ever do that again. Learn your lesson. You know, if you're going to take it on, do a good job and, and think of the, you know, think of these things on your own. So uh, just the way Baba can save us and work with us and yet also push us along so that we can do better next time. Jay Baba, thank you, Ron. I just wanted to add again, you had brought up that idea. Um, the way that that line is, is, but when you understand the limitless truth, this diversity will not create the least note of discord in the symphony of creation. <laughs> so we are living in the symphony of creation. Wow. Jay Baba. The symphony. Jay Baba. Well, um, I don't see any hands up, but are there any last quotes that want to be read? If not, why don't I read mine? And it's short, and I'm going to need help with it. Oh, I see a hand up. Janice, let's hear your quote. Could you please unmute? Okay. It, uh, really, this quote is quite personal and I'm very grateful to Baba for this. When a person realizes that he can have more glorious satisfaction by widening the sphere of his interests and activities he is heading toward the life of service. At this stage, he entertains many good desires. 
He wants to make others happy by relieving distress and helping them. And I say that because it's, uh, my sisters and my family have been on a year long journey with my oldest sister who had a very devastating stroke. And really from the very beginning, I thought, Baba has put us on this journey. And what is this about? So when I read this this morning, I was like, oh, thank you, Baba. Mm -hmm. Did we hear it again? When a person realizes that he can have more glorious satisfaction by widening the sphere of his interests and activities, he is heading toward the life of service. At this stage, he entertains many good desires. He wants to make others happy by relieving distress and helping them. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you. Any comments, any thoughts on that? Yeah, he, he sees to every detail and that's how he helps us. Both with Janice and with, with what Ron was saying, he sees to every detail. And the thing is, it sort of unfolds as you go through the journey. Thank you. Jay Baba. You know, it's paying attention to the pieces of the puzzle. With Vesta at the last, it was like, I would go to Baba and say, Baba, we don't know what to do. We really don't know what to do. And it was serious. And it's like, Baba did it. And I, but that, I said that to him. I said, Baba, you know what to do. And I know you will do it because we don't know what to do. And I know you will do it. And he did. And it was surprising. We're always surprised. And it's like to pay attention to the pieces of the puzzle because when we don't know what to do, Baba will take over. We can trust him. That's that trust. That gets back to Elizabeth. You know, he's inviting you and me and all of us to trust him. When it's really scary or really feels serious, he, he just says, just trust me. And when we do, it's like magic. He's magic. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Gabriella's here. Say Baba, Gabriella. Baba, well, this is a wonderful meeting to slip into. Um, so my quote was, love all, be big hearted, generous, forgiving, and you will find happiness soon. I will help you. Forgiveness consists in loosening the bindings of duality in Maya, which make you feel and find the one as many. Again, that one as many. Should I read it again? Yes, please. Love all. Be big hearted, generous, forgiving, and you will find happiness soon. I will help you. Forgiveness consists in loosening the bindings of duality in Maya, which make you feel and find the one as many. So that one has like two parts for me. Um, I love how he says, you will find happiness soon. It's not like a far away thing, you know, but by being big hearted, generous, forgiving. And then he talks about how to forgive, how to forgive. And that in forgiveness, we loosen the bindings of duality in Maya, which is such a simple and profound thought. And so uh, for me personally, um, I just had my big 65th, anniversary, uh, 65th birth, birthday and my brothers and sisters were all here and um, I broke my leg like right before they came. So it was like 
a bit of a drama, of course. I don't know why with Baba, I always, he makes things very dramatic, but I'm sure he knows who he's dealing with. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, so then there was this big party planned and I got out, they sent me out of the hospital real quick and um, I just decided to go ahead and do it. And we had this party, which I, I vaguely remember, you know, cause I was there, they kept having me sing and, and there was lots of good food. I'd planned a lot of it before and people helped and it was awesome. And it was this big hearted, generous, forgiving at the time where you'd least, you could withdraw and curl up and instead putting it out, you know, like, you know, the next day I was making chicken soup for people who were sick, you know, that sort of thing. And I think that Baba makes me more capable to do that now. Um, and one more thing about the forgiveness, but, you know, I've had some mental health issues in the past and my brothers and sisters were there at the end of this party and I, I was got upset about something. And so they started to think that I was going into some kind of state. And in, it, was, it was the end of the party. We were cleaning up. And they, they got, came down to me really hard. You've got to go home. Go rest. Go rest. Because we were in the clubhouse just a couple doors from my house. And, and I, I argued back. And um, it was really humiliating. I mean, I'd had this amazing party. I was the star. I made it through all the broken leg and the da da da. And then I was just humiliated by my brothers and sisters. And, um, but Baba, I mean, humiliation is an interesting thing because, you know, he likes us. I sort of think sometimes he likes us to, to be humiliated. We're not, so, it balanced out all of that, you know, Gabriella is so amazing. She's 65. Well, all of a sudden I was like at the bottom of the barrel. And so um, I had to do some forgiveness about that and realize that it came from their love and concern for me, even though I was I was okay, and they weren't completely wrong. You know, I was really riled up because I hadn't eaten and I had had surgery and I had and I, whatever the reason was. I was not my normal self, and so um, forgiving and that in so doing that these bonds of duality that you know you have in families so deeply. I feel by not. By letting it go, learning, and which eventually we did, and that a lot of those, that maybe loosened a little of those bonds. So that was just a very timely thing for me. So sorry it's so personal. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Happy 65th year. <laughs> it was wonderful. Happy birthday, Gabriella. Gabriella. Yeah. Hey, Baba. Prayers, prayers for your life. <laughs> and that's and that's the gift of the transformation from humiliation to humility. Mm. <laughs> and you wear that very well. <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you. Must have been a birthday present. <laughs> hey, <Bob. laughs> Thank you, Gabriella. Do we have any others who have not read? Well, then maybe I will read mine. And as usual, I sort of blank. I just say, yeah, but I don't have things to say. So I'm going to need your help in figuring this out. It's very straightforward, I think. Whatever you are, you will ever be the same in the eyes of your beloved, who looks to no outward form or appearance, but to the inner being the beauty of the heart, the depth of the soul. Oh. And that's Rami. Again? Whenever you are, you will ever be the same in the eyes of your beloved, who looks to no outward form or appearance, but to the inner being, the beauty of the heart, the depth of the soul. I think Baba sees only himself in you. That's a perfect one for you, I think, because that's what you emanate. Um, it, it's 
it's, it's like, all, all of us. He's he just sees him. He sees himself in all of us. Diana, can you read it one more time, please? Whatever you are, you will ever be the same in the eyes of your beloved. Who looks to no outward form or appearance, but to the inner being, the beauty of the heart, the depth of the soul. Boy, that is so comforting to, uh, you know, I think of uh, you know, myself when I was 12, you know, I, uh, that he sees that same person, that same, and we do all, all of our striving, uh, you know, we have to do it. But in the end, <laughs> we're, we have an essence that's, that we came into this world with <laughs> this time. <laughs> wow. Thank you. You know, I'm getting this image of like, we are this, this pure, beautiful light and around us, we have all of these um, multicolored like glass pieces that we appear to be in the eyes of the world. And he looks right through that to the pure light, to the, to each person, because he, he looks to the inner being, the beauty of the heart, the depth of the soul. And you, and you can really feel the encouragement that more and more we come to know ourselves and each other from that perspective. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Just that if he's seeing us that deeply, it's like the energy is going inward, right? So we can put our attention inward and go to that depth and that's what others, that's what I guess I was feeling about you, that will emanate out, but it's this, where am I putting my focus? I'm putting my focus in this beautiful deep place that Baba also sees in me. Which puts us in contact with others. I mean, we go in and then that's also part of going out to others. It feels like Baba is um, lifting the veils a little bit. You know, it's like illusion is is looking more and more like illusion. <laughs> Thank you all. Do we have any last, they don't have to be the last, any more comments about any particular reading or about our whole gathered experience? Yes. Mike? I have a, I have a uh, story. It's a story that Monty told, and I think it kind of relates to Marvin's dream, perhaps. Uh, and maybe you've heard this dream, or, uh, this story from Monty, it, and it takes place in a, uh, a very remote village, very poor village in India. And, uh, and there's a, this poor woman has her hut there. She has her family and, and uh, Three uh, sannyasis. Do you, do you all know what sannyas, sannyasis are? They're, well, you all know. I guess I have to explain it to Bible lovers. Uh, three large sannyasis. These have been pretty well-fed sannyasis <laughs> as, they, as they traverse across India, and they stop at her 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 humble little dwelling and say, "All right, um, uh, you will give us dinner uh, first, but first we're going to." Uh, go to the river and do our, our ritualistic bathing and then we'll come back and, and we'll eat. And of course, you know, in India, you, 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 it, it would be a, 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 a humiliation, a travesty if you didn't feed the sannyasis that they're holy men. You're supposed to do that. You're expected to do that. And so she was in a tizzy because she just fed her family and they're gone and, and the dishes are washed and put away. So she calls out to Krishna and she's pleading with Krishna, what do I do? These, these holy men will be back any minute now. And, and uh, Krishna appears. And uh, Mani said, you know, Krishna being the perfect actor, he's acting all, all excited too, like, oh, what do we do? And, and he says, let me see your dishes that you just washed, your pot, let me see your rice pot. And, uh, and so she shows it, and I washed it. And, and he looks at it and there's a little speck of a piece of rice stuck to the pot and uh and krishna picks it up and eats it 
And, uh, and what's happening down by the river where the sannyasis are, they're ritualistic bathing. They're, they're bending down and they're coming up and they're burping, they're belching, and uh, like they had a huge meal. And, uh, and they said, and they're saying to each other, I'm, I'm, I'm full. I can't really eat another thing. What will we do with that poor woman? She's cooking a big meal for us. And he said, let's just get out of here. Let's, let's sneak out of here and don't say a thing. So the moral of that story is you, you give to God whatever little bit you have. And, and that'll, if that's all you have, that will be plenty to give to, uh, give to God. So perhaps that relates to Marvin's story of, of uh, not being able to build a, a mm -hmm. throne out of gold and silver and things, but uh, just whatever you had available to you that you gave from your heart, that's, that was very pleasing to, uh, to God. I think we all envy <laughs> Marvin's dream. Oh, I was so jelly. I was like, oh, you oh, you got to do about Baba last night? He's like, oh, he was complaining. I was so busy with Baba. I'm like, you dreamt about Baba? And you were like, I was such a busy dream. It's like, it's okay. He's like, oh, you would rather sleep and not have Baba in your dream? Jay, Baba, wonderful story. Thank you, Mike. I want to thank you all for this lovely, lovely gathering. And I thought we might take a few moments of silence. I'm going to put up a photo of Baba and we can have a few moments of silence with Baba. <clears throat> If you'd like to share with me, Baba's J, please unmute. And happy birthday, Baba. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Baba. I have to point out, Irene, Irene, you aren't you on the California coast? Is that snow there? Oh, no. No? No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>